It's a high-tech conversation. On the low-tech topic. Live on the World Wide Web via Zoom. Bench Talk 101. Welcome to Bench Talk 101. This week on our topic talks, we'll talk about our winding sticks. So, um, as usual, uh, for anyone who hasn't joined us before, um, if you pop your name in the chat, I will ask you to, to when it's your turn to speak, and we'll go in order of the names that are in the chat. So while um, people are popping their names in and trying to get as, as, as far ahead of the list as possible, I am going to show um, some pictures that were sent to me today by Carl Holtai. Unfortunately, he can't join us today, but he has sent um, a picture of his winding sticks and he made these out of uh, what looks like brass and uh, steel. So uh, he, was, he asked me to show these, so I've... Uh, Decided to share them here. Do you know how long those are? Do you have any proportions on them, Shrenik? I have no further information, unfortunately. Um, that's what Carl sent me not too long ago. So I said, I'll share that. Um, we're over to Andy, Andy Tuckwell. You do need to unmute. I thought I'd get the corrective, ac corrective action in early rather than wait to see everyone's beautiful ivory inlaid ebony with brass accents and uh, gold features. And yeah, you know, I wish I could show them, but I've not brought them. I'm not at home. Um, but the pair of winding sticks that I turn to first, um, they're very easy to get. All you need to do is uh, put a shower over your bath. And when you get the shower kit, that comes with several straight bits and several curved bits, you'll find there's two straight bits of aluminum extrusion that you don't need and they're left over. And they're about mm, 10 inches long and they're completely straight. You can put any edge against any other edge um, and it works, you know, they are perfect. So a little bit of um, permanent marker along the edges, done, end of story. So it's been a very nice evening. Glad to share it all with you um, and see you all next week. Cheers, Andy. That would have been a perfect candidate for one of those crude tools, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess we're everyone, able to Everyone can feel they've got better than me now. <laughs> I guess we're over to Matthias then. Right, yes. So uh, I have not got any shop-made uh, winding sticks to show, but I do have three different pairs that are all uh, store bought or bought. Uh, the first ones are a pair of Rob Cosman ones. They're, I'm sort of in two minds about them. They were a bit on the pricey end, but they were the first one I found ready made at the time when I was not confident enough to try making my own. Uh, they're made of torrified maple, so maple that has had all its uh, humidity basically, well, not burnt, but, but uh, removed with, with prolonged heat treatment. They still, I've had them for a couple of years now, and they still smell like it's a smell of uh, a cold sauna. So wood that has been heated repeatedly. It's not a very attractive smell, but the good thing is they are very stable. They are probably the truest of the pair that I have. Uh, I also have a pair that I bought from Phil Edwards of Philly Plains. They're made of walnut with a maple strip on the rear one. These are probably my favorite ones. They are lighter than the Cosmans. They were about the third of the price. So they, they're, if someone is looking for buying a pair of good winding sticks, these are decent value for money. Like the Cosmans, I think after a couple of but a couple of years in my shop now, I should probably true them up. They are still reasonably accurate, but they are not spot on. And finally, I shall have to stand up. Uh, 
as I've been working on a bench build lately, I've had larger things to try for wind than just uh, boards. And for that, I have been using a couple of Veritas uh, al aluminum straight edges, the 50 inch one and the 38 inch one, just added some uh, masking tape to the shorter one. And of course, I mean, they are what every winding stick has to be. They are parallel with each other. So that's what I've been doing for winding sticks. And finally, something completely different, namely another use to which you can put uh, the cardboard tube in which uh, the Alfie Shine polishing kit arrives. Namely, you can use it to store a bunch of oak drawball pins that I made today. In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to draw ball my bench together. So I've made the pegs for that. And that was my contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Matthias. Uh, we're over to Josh. Okay, uh, I also wanted to kind of go against the idea that winding sticks have to be pretty. Mine are, mine put the stick in winding stick. They're, they're upgraded pieces of, uh, well, the Instagram's favorite wood, right? Red oak. Uh, they're simple one by twos uh, with a couple of upgrades. First of all, you know, playing them straight on the, on the top and bottom. I put, instead of having them angled, I just cut a rabbit in them and then ran a Sharpie in, in the rabbit. Uh, and Mark, well, I put it all in there and then stuck the Sharpie in there. And so I marked the center of them and I have this, the, the, the rabbit and, and this not only adds contrast, right? So you can, you can see more easily, uh, but it also tells you how the winding stick should be oriented to each other. Because it, it's easy to just take a straight edge and check to be sure this is straight and this is straight, and then you're done. And as long as the orientation, like you have them either this way or this way, but not ever this way, then it doesn't matter if, if both of these edges are, are straight, but it, it's slanted, right? So say you have winding wedges, but you always know which way the wedges go relative to each other, and you're not trying to do this, then, then all you need to do to check your winding sticks is put them up against a straight edge. And, and you can see, like I've, this is plain, uh, the shellac I put on these for what reason, I don't know, uh, is, is planed off here on the bottom because I, I straighten them once. And otherwise, you know, when I'm not using them, they just sit on little pegs like that against a wall. And, and I will say that one place where they're useful, uh, that you, it allows you to do something you can't do by simply like pushing on the corners, right? Which is a, like that's super handy. You put the board on the bench, you push on the corners to see where it's twisted is you can use those to kind of, to get a better sense of where the board is twisted. You, you can move them along uh, to, to different parts of the board to get us to, to understand how it's twisted for when you're, when you're then cutting it in, into parts, you can kind of cut around some of the twist and make things easier on yourself. But those are, those are my, uh, you know, the basic little red oak uh, winding sticks. Can you go back, Joshua, into yeah. the angled wedge uh, sticks and yeah. and uh, uh, add a little bit to why you would want that or why you would, um, what would be the purpose of any of that? Uh, well, it's just, uh, in my mind, the, the purpose is that you, it's easier if you only have to check that the top of the winding stick and the bottom of the winding sticks are are flat Where and parallel, right? It, right. So you plane them together, 
And, and so as, as long if they are both, you know, both flat and both exactly lined up with each other. But like if I, I've never measured the, these look from, from what I can tell, it looks like it's the same dimension here as over here. But if it weren't, as long as I always have th this side, like I'm comparing the same two sides. So it, it, it as long as really the two matter. ends match. Right. Is so that what it, you're saying? Right. So so while it's it's not a it's not that big of a deal to worry about parallel as well as straight, it's even easier if all you have to ever do is check that it's straight and that the two, right? So, so you check them together, you clamp them together and and plane them straight, and then and then you're done. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily have to then go about and obsess about whether, you know, like if this end is you know, the other an eighth of an inch smaller than this end, it doesn't matter. But that's gotcha. also why you want to know how they're oriented to each other so you're not turned right. around. Thank you. Uh, so it's just, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's only important if you want to be even lazier with your winding sticks. Thank you very much, Josh. Um, over to Daryl. Okay, good evening or good afternoon in our place. Uh, you'll have to excuse me for fumbling a bit. I was just at the optometrist and my pupils are about this big. So <laughs> I can already see anything. Uh, I keep my winding sticks up on the top shelf. And uh, one of them is uh, walnut and the other one is cherry. And they've got inlays, uh, white and black. And they, like, they're just scraps. Like, they're not even the same length. Uh, and they're just scraps. And I just plane them till they're parallel and then inlet some, some different contrasting woods on them. And uh, actually those are piano keys, I think, the, uh, the white parts. And that works pretty good. But you have to have the straight edge to go with it. Uh, winding sticks won't do you much good unless you have the straight edge to go with it. And mine is something I got from my father-in-law. He was a machinist. And this was his straight edge. Uh, it's a little rougher, worse for wear now. It's a 3 8 inch bar of aluminum, about 52 inches long. And uh, it's no longer good for machine work, but uh, for woodworking, it's plenty good enough. So that was uh, my contribution to uh, winding sticks. Can you, uh, Daryl, can you explain uh, how you use the three of those together? Uh, I use the uh, straight edge. You put it on, on edge on the board and move it around and see where it's touching. Because if it spins um, easily off, on a point, then you know that's a high spot. So you're right. using and that to check check uh, across your flatness as separate from the winding sticks. Yeah, you the use winding the winding sticks, sticks to check yeah. your wind and, and the, yeah. the straight edge check your flatness. Yeah, and they, they go together quite well. Uh, sure. I, I don't think I would want to try and, and just use winding sticks to flatten something. Great, thank you. Thank no you very much, Daryl. Um, over to Will. All right, I was uh, working on uh, a big blue up on my bench last night. I got it all done, checked my mail, and I saw what the subject was. I, I don't have winding sticks. So I watched a couple of Paul Sellers videos and started it. So I've got mine started. It's, um, it's laid out for that diagonal cut that he does in his video. Um, I did was supposed to finish it today, but I got called and I had talked to some lawyer stuff and. My car got a flat tire. It was an interesting and busy morning, but I did not get it to where I was expecting to have it today. But that's it. It's just a pit. It's, um, it's something called roasted maple. It's a little different from tar tarified rope. Um, it's actually like a roast, right? You um, they put it in there. It's very dry. It's very hard and it's very stable. I've made a lot of stuff out of uh, the roasted maple, but I've got a couple other interesting things for it. So I'll get that done. But does, no, does I, the, the roasted maple smells better than the torrified, I bet. Um, 
I don't, I don't know where you, was that you? Um... It's Dar Daryl. No, that was me. That was me who said that uh, the torrified maple smells like a cold sauna. Um, I come from Northern Ontario and um, during my youth, which was a hell of a long time ago, um, and I, I just got out of the reserves and I spent some time doing some forest fire fighting. That's what it smells like, a forest fire. To me, anyways. So, um, and that's as it should be, because when you're cutting it up and you're using it on the saws, that's what you smell. It smells like something's burning, but it's not. It's just this. It's very beautiful. If it's got a good piece of maple, um, I'm not sure it's coming out in this. But there, there you can. You can see a little bit of the plate, the, the tiger striping in this particular piece. So, yeah, that's it. I didn't get it, but um, I only saw the email last night after about 10 o'clock, so I got it that far anyways. Did pretty well to get that far there, Will. Will, do you have plans for uh, the contrasting wood and what you're going to do there? Well, actually, I was going to hope to get some ideas from you guys. Um, I do have some lovely maple that I've been using on other tools, um, such as um, this that I made. And I made this about... I think I made this in the, the fall last year, which is a uh, panel gauge. And this is the same wood as, as this. Um, so I was thinking of uh, using um, some inlay of some maple, um, but I've got some figured maple. I've got a lot of scraps of uh, that I put woods around. Um, a Luther in the area who uh, passed away, I got a chunk of his wood because I was thought I might get interest in Luther. And I built a few guitars, but. Um, I've got a lot more pieces for a lot more guitars I can get to. I just want to get my shop cleaned up and organized so it's more or easier to work. That's why the cabinet's being built behind me. That's it. Winding six. I'll have some soon. But I think I'll you should inlay it with uh, boxwood. Do you know how freaking rare and hard to get boxwood is in my neck of the woods? No. Um, <laughs> But as to that, because I've been thinking of, I, I want to make do some hand planes. Here's something you probably don't see very much. This is a native to North America. It is hop horn bean. It's very hard. Um, it, ha it has that clear section. Can I get that good well lit? There it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking maybe I should use that as uh, a piece of that, because I've got, I just picked this up in the weekend. Uh, I've not See, worked with it. It's beautiful quarter song. Whereabouts so, are you, Will? I'm in Toronto. Oh, okay. I'm in Oakville. So we're, we're close. Oh, cool. I got this at Exotic Woods. Yeah, okay. You drove right by my house. Yeah, I'll that's have on the you, I'll have to invite you to the next Galoot barbecue. We might have one in December. What kind of barbecue? Galoot barbecue. Uh, just a bunch of hand tool woodworkers get together. Okay, yeah. I'd be honest. I, lo I love right. that. Go, I'll guys, keep you in mind. I just point out that you've just, we're recording this and you've just put your locations in the recording. Uh, if you check Facebook, you know where I live. Not exactly, but you know I live in Toronto. Okay. There's 6.4 okay. million people in Toronto and almost, almost 80% of them have had one X vaccine and we are at, we are at, I put something out, it's check my post, it's really awesome. We've only had 45 new cases of COVID this morning. It's, this, uh, um, very good. We, are, we are very high, highly vaccinated in the city of Toronto. Mind you, if you guys remember, Toronto got hit hard by SARS. We remember. Okay. Um, should we move on to uh, Mitch? Good evening, everyone. Um, following on from the idea of aluminum extrusions, this is one that I use quite often, along with a white one, and it's about a metre long. Obviously, made sure it was nice and straight because they're not, not always straight. Uh, they work great for things like bench tops. This is the set that I made originally when I started hand tool woodworking. That's just oak with some walnut keys laid in. Plenty long enough for everything I do. I guess that's about 16 inches. 
And then uh, a few years ago, I was making some to sell and I've got a couple of sets still left. That's uh, oak with some African blackwood keys and uh, some mahogany with, I think that was holly, holly keys. That's nice. I like that last set. So you only put the keys on one set, Mitch, is that correct? I put a center key. Ah, okay. So you know where center is, not that that's particularly important because obviously if you're doing something narrow, you soon find the balance point. I like those, very nice. I got a nice, uh, yeah, nice chatoyance as people say, is it? Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Mitch, uh, uh, sorry I keep asking questions, but what th thickness do you prefer as far as making them? Are they approximately a half inch or three quarter inch? Do you think thinner is better or is there any um, preference on that? I, I make the, the rear one thicker than the front one. I don't know if you can see that very easily. And yeah. I also make them slightly wedge shaped so that the base is thicker, heavier, just balances better. Um, they're about, I suppose, an inch and a half, a little over an inch and a half wide. Of course, each one could be a different uh, thickness as long as they're parallel. And lengthwise, these are down to about 14 inches, uh, which I think is probably for most people doing uh, sort of cabinets and things at home that's plenty big enough very nice thank you Mitch. did you did you farm the holly mitch or did you uh find it somewhere i farmed quite a bit no i didn't farm it actually i i bought a a large slab some years ago used most of it and then i've got a a reasonable size chunk that i go to it for any small bits i need I like working with it. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you, Mitch. I'm just going to jump in here because uh, my winding sticks are incredibly similar to Mitch's. And I realized that after I'd already designed them and spotted Mitch's video. Now, Jim's not here tonight, but I made these deliberately to wind him up because they're Purple Heart and Boxwood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like the, uh, the square keys. At the bottom yeah so I, I i've seen everyone making round ones and i decided i didn't want to do what everyone else did and um, like it's it's probably hard to see but these are actually dovetailed they're dovetailed yeah. in as well can you, you show, show us the top um cool yeah so it's it's only a, it's sort of an inlay on the edge um as 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 everyone else is talking about these are wedge shaped as well and I think Chester, you were asking why the wedge shape helps. Oh no, I know, I understand. No, okay, yeah, yeah. I thought you were asking. Yeah. No, I was yeah. just wondering uh, if there was a preference on whether on how thick. Um, you know, some people made them, some people make them square, some people angled them. You know, these are about half an inch at the bottom and a quarter inch at the top. Yeah, I, th I think that's pretty good size. That's that's plenty big enough, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then to true them up, it's incredibly, incredibly simple. Put them together, make sure, so you put them together, one upside down, uh, and then put them down on the flat surface and line them up. Put them in your vise, plane that surface, plane that surface when you open it up and, um, and, and actually have both sides. It will be parallel. Also very nice. And so you're going to send those to Jim for the uh, museum, eh? No, these are actually on their way to Tate, probably oh. next early next week. Should make another pair for, for Jim out of Purple Heart, I think. Yeah, and a third for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have any Chester, so maybe you will need uh, so one to six. Right, I won't take don't, up any more don't time. Give, don't give Chester any, otherwise he'll start collecting them. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sean's, uh, I'm not sure if Sean's still in the meeting. Yeah, I'm uh, back. Oh, you're back. Okay. If I, my internet has not been in its best health today, so if I vanish suddenly, just move on. Um, I made mine quite a while back. Um, there's nothing too special or dramatic about them. They're a variant of what I've seen everybody else do. 
Um, walnut with maple inlays. They're kind of not straight up tapered, but they're wider at the bottom than they are at the top. Uh, about 16 inches long and an inch tall. Um, I will say that uh, a lot of the tricks people have described for truing these up today, I knew none of them. <laughs> I found this uh, quite a challenge to get the two of these guys to be um, completely in agreement. Um, I maybe got a little over obsessive. I was testing them against each other and trying to slide um, feeler gauges in between and spent an awful lot of energy getting them absolutely spot on before I was happy with them. But the good news is I finished them with them. Um, Peacock Oil and Alpi Shine, and they really have stayed stable after that. I haven't had to go back and true them up afterwards. I've checked them a few times. I've been very happy with them. I probably use them less often um, than you would think. I find with small pieces, you can just kind of tell if something can twist. It's only with the longer pieces that I really have to break these out. Um, when I did make these, the, the off cut I made them out of was quite a bit longer. Um, um, I decided to just do most of the work while it was still one giant long piece. So I have a mini set that matches that's substantially shorter. And these hardly ever get broken out. If I have a long thin piece and I care about whether or not it's in wine, which let's face it, it's not all that often, I've still got these because if you stick these on a long thin piece, they will always tell you an inch wide piece isn't wide. <laughs> and you will be able to change the direction with a single pass of a plane. So Something like this is a little bit saner for the narrow piece. Um, Sean, is your shop is your shop uh, air conditioned? Not necessarily cooling, but is your shop heated and air conditioned? Do you have no. uh, weather control? So it's basically an outdoor. Uh, it's kind the... of half and half. It's a uh, it's attached to the side of the house, but it's not insulated. It has you know, if it's windy outside, I will feel it sitting here. But at the same time, it gets a certain amount of heat leached off the main building. So the temperature doesn't change that fast. Um, I think the reason I'm asking is to see if you keep those in your shop, mm -hmm. do you find seasonal changes in them at all? No, I'm not. Well, not that I've managed to notice. I'll put it that way. Um, I don't think that's, I think that's more down to many, many, many coats of finish rather than the shop. Um, I can't remember how many coats I put on this, but it was well over a half dozen before I stopped. Um, other pieces in here, I've noticed them move as the seasons change. I think these are just sealed up well enough that it doesn't really care. Um, and that's pretty much it for me. Oh, the other one, the thing I will try out is before I got around to making these, like a, a bunch of people said, a piece of aluminium extru extrusion did, and a little bit of marker did me just fine. And there's no need to slave over a pretty pair of winding sticks. I got by with that for years. Thank you very much, Sean. Um, over to Phil. Uh, the difficulty going at this point is most things have been said by now. So let's try and put it in context of what's been said already. Um, pair of winding sticks inlay made by me a while ago. And they are pretty stable. I haven't had to true these. Um, just got a basic finish. Chester, I hang those up. And the fact they hang in the air rather than sit on something may help them, possibly. But, you know, it's pretty old mahogany when I got to it. Um, sycamore because they didn't have any holly. But, yeah, usual stuff. Wedge-shaped, about that length. The thing I would say is I do believe in aluminum extrusions, but I haven't got any. I'm going to get some one day. I absolutely do believe in a flat surface. And if anyone has a cast iron <coughs> saw, then yep, that works pretty well up to a point. But as Josh said, if you put one of these in, you can see is the twist continuous through the whole board or does it only start at one end? So you can move these up and down the board. What I did want to say though was, um, I find that that is, it's useful for something narrow. So if, I'm, if I've got a rail or something I'm dealing with, that's pretty useful. If I've got a board that's getting towards that sort of size, it's not actually adding that much to me. So, stand back for these. Quick and dirty. Something with black marker on, as we said, and something with tape on, as we said. And that sort of perspective is what I look at quite a lot if I'm dealing with a, you know, eight inch wide board. And that works. And those, those have been true. Those aren't, I mean, that's just a really shitty pine. So nothing particularly fancy there, but that works. 
I think that is the sum of my experience with Mining 6. Cheers, Phil. I'm surprised you still managed to add. <laughs> well, I may have repeated something, but, you know. <laughs> um, Richard. Richard Berry, sorry. Yep, yeah, no problem. Um, I'm not sure I can add much. Uh, <laughs> these are my winding sticks. So I battled to put them in the shot. Uh, done a bit of a fiddly bit of an end treatment to make them pretty. Um, mine was an exercise in trying to make something pretty because I was it was for my own edification, not um, you know, it was the first attempt at inlaying anything. Uh, they are a sapili with little maple inlays in the center and on the edges there. Uh, I checked my Instagram feed and I posted about making them on the 28th of July, 2019. So that's almost a, two years ago to the day uh, that I posted about making these. So that's how old they are. They're still pretty straight. I wouldn't feel that I need to take anything off them for the sort of accuracy I need, though I do see a faint sliver of light when I look through them, but I don't think you'd be able to see any light coming through that. It is, it is all pretty, pretty, pretty good. And I use them often because I'm always hand planing. So these are one of my go-to tools when I'm preparing stock. Uh, three eighths of an inch thick um, and they're straight. There's no profile to them, just straight pieces. And Richard, how do you, um, where do you, where and how do you store them? I store them in my attic. I have got insulation in the roof. There's a lot of heat that comes out of the house below it. So there's only about a five degree difference between the house temperature and the attic temperature in winter. So it might drop to as low as 12 degrees centigrade. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Uh, I can tell you what it is. And I'm assuming that that's where you use them as well. You store them in the same area that you use them. Yep. Uh, that's about 50, 48, 50 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And um, the house I would keep about, so what would that be? About 12 degrees Fahrenheit would be warmer below it. But it, it's pretty stable. Um, I do have a problem with humidity. Uh, so I do get a lot of wood movement, but these, when they move, they move together. So you know, they stay parallel to each other, each edge, and I've never had a problem with them going out of true on me to such an extent that I can't get a, a board as flat as I need it to be. I like, your, I like the end treatment, it's very nice. Yeah, I agree. And, and I'm wondering, what finish did you put on them, Richard? Do you have any finish on them or just wax or? It's actually a cutting, a cutting board oil uh, made by, uh, I know, I can't find the, the bottle. I know where the bottle is, but it'll be a, a, a job to get it out. And um, do you replenish it every so often? Do you? About every six months, I would give it a, a, a little bit of a, a treatment just to, and. Very nice. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Richard. Uh, Thiago. Hi there. Yeah, yeah nothing uh, special about the, the winding sticks. I have these, uh, th this pair, and uh, a couple of uh, you know longer and uh, uh, shorter pairs as well. This is mahogany, which I think it's uh, stable enough with some maple here for the inlays. Uh, the interesting thing is uh, I, I like to make them with uh, students. I think it's, uh, it's a great way to uh, develop some skills and uh, learn about careful planning. And uh, we usually make them when a student is learning how to hand plane and, and, and to do the, uh, 
your uh, wood preparation by hand. So when, when you uh, do stock prep, uh, you can break them, uh, you know, you, you use the, the winding stick. So uh, making tools is another way to, you know, uh, show and, and, and sediment those, uh, those skills. So I don't use them uh, that often as, as, as much as Chester. I trust my eyes and uh, things just come out uh, perfectly fine. And uh, oh, just one thing I, 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 I was hoping to say in the beginning, uh, Joshua, the, uh, the, uh, those uh, electronic boards, they are the stu stupidest thing in, in a classroom because you were never my uh, professor. So um, yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much, Thiago. Um, okay, over, over to Roger, Roger Hardwick. Hello there. That's better. You can hear me now. Mine are the other end of the extreme in that um, these I made these several years ago. Uh, am I highlighted? Uh, I can highlight you. Oh, so. There you go. That's better. Uh, these were made uh, some years ago when I was um, trying to flatten a the board. They're made of sapili. They're 27 inches long, and all I did was the white is just tip X, the black on the front is just a black marker pen, and uh, they're hung up on a nail. There's no finish on them, but to roughly flatten a board, they work perfectly fine. And uh, and if uh, I have a large plane of thickness, sir, but by using these, you can find you can be more economical in, in flattening the board. If you just put it on a, a planer, um, you can take away a lot of wood to get it flat. Whereas using the winding sticks, you can be a lot more careful on uh, how you flatten it to get the most out of the wood. So there they are, very simple. Thank you very much, Roger. Surprising how the simplest of designs work. You know, they don't need to be that complicated. Um, Andy Tuckwell again. Oh, yeah. Um, people reminded me of something I didn't say, and nobody else has said it yet, so I might as well say it. Uh, when the subject of um, planing a big bench top comes up, and um, you know, the little sticks that you use on small pieces aren't good enough. I, I never bothered making a bigger set. I just took two spirit levels off the hook and use those. And for that sort of thing that you, you're not going to need very often, that's the quickest, easiest way to go, assuming you've not bought them in Poundland or somewhere. Um, <laughs> two spirit levels, straight, parallel. They don't have to be the same height because the straight line will still differ to the same degree, even if you squint at it at an angle. Right, it's just there. Not much to show for, though. I have done that, Andy. I, while I say I can recognize the twist, but I have done that. And I mm -hmm. do have a metal straight edge as well. But I just rarely, usually I can see wind in a board. So don't Andy, take away. It's funny. It's funny you say, as long as they're not from Poundland, I find that the Poundland ones are pre-twisted, but they're all twisted the same. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, so they work just as well. <laughs> so speaking of spirit levels, has anyone seen these new ones from K-Pro? Absolutely they wonderful. You, you can read them from miles away. They've got uh, what they call a red dot. Uh -huh. Hang on. See that? Hi. Oh, yeah. Best ones I've come across so far. And are those aluminum, Mitch? They are. Yes, they are. Very heavy. Well, I say very heavy. For 
For an no. aluminum spirit level, aluminium spirit level, yeah. they're heavy, yeah. Right, before we run away off topic again, um, over to Bruce. Hi, um, strictly speaking, not winding sticks, but this was a hunk of stainless given to me by the guy who introduced me to Japanese tools. And I use it to check with my stones for flatness. If it'll rock across, that means it's flat. If it just spins in the middle, that means the stone is high. Or if it stays at one point, it, it means it's dished out and it's, 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 it's fast for me. Again, not very exciting, but it works. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> it's a good story. <laughs> Cheers, Bruce. Um, Michael. Yeah, so I'm again in the category of unposh woodworking. And um, I basically use um, a Veritas straight edge, which I use um, as a straight edge. And the counterpart is just some cut off from a very straight um, piece of gash from the Home Depot. And um, so far it did work. Uh, it, it's surprisingly stable. It doesn't move. <laughs> um, I don't know why. Maybe I'm living in the paradise of low humidity air. I don't know. Um, but so far I was not confident enough in my planing skills to make a pair of these. So I learned today a lot about these um, planing wedges and stuff. So maybe I, I will try to do more, uh, a pair. But so far, just a piece of gash and a straight edge worked pretty well for me. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, I think we were over to Rick. All right, um, I'm actually surprised that no one has showed these. Um, not that they're really that exciting of a product. I got these from Lee Valley. They're made of aluminum. They, can you see there, they nest together real nice. Um, got them for nice and cheap. And the truth is I hardly ever use them. Um, the, probably my biggest, like as far as a product, uh, its biggest weakness is it didn't come with a center point. So I actually had to mark it on with a Sharpie and I need to um, mark it up again because it's starting to wear out. But I only really use these to flatten my bench. And then if I got my bench really nice and flat, then my bench becomes my reference surface that uh, because I mostly work with smaller pieces of wood, I can just kind of set on the bench and I can tell it's not flat because it rocks on the bench. So this is more of a bench prep tool for me than it is actually a woodworking tool, I guess. So, um, but uh, yeah, the nice thing about these is I never have to trim them up unless I drop them really hard on something uh, really solid. So- um, uh, How long are those, Rick? I'd say they're probably 18 or 20 inches. Good size. And, uh, yeah, like, and they're, yeah, they're, they're kind of, there's something you can just throw in your toolbox and not worry about. I can use them as a straight edge um, uh, or whatever. And uh, yeah, like I'll literally put one on one end of the bench, one on the other end of the bench, make sure those four corners are all uh, pretty parallel and then just connect the dots. And uh, yeah, outside of that, I, I don't personally, well, I think it's, I can't really, my eyesight doesn't work really well with, um, with winding sticks. And then also um, I find it's a lot of getting down low so that you can look across them, which my knees are so worn out from doing real construction work that uh, I don't like doing that if I don't have to. So yeah, I, th I think I came up with a workaround just because my knees were getting sore from getting down to look. So maybe I was doing it wrong. I don't know. <laughs> That's as you just to say something, that's a good point because I find if I bend down, my head's moving just fractionally. Yeah. I just lay my head on the bench. Yeah, and and I just I can't I <laughs> I just can't see to to see when they're when they're um, yeah they're right. So I'll get real like go through the pain and suffering of getting the bench lined up yeah. and and do it then and then I never want to see them again until it's time to to relevel a bench. Just I'd agree with that. And that's, that's why that helps because it's just a, a one flash you're looking for run the whole line. Yeah. So these ones here, they have, um, they have, uh, 
a bunch of segmented lines. Yeah. And I think the idea was that you have that one in the back and then you have this one in the front oh. and you can see how many lines out. And I think there was supposed to be some kind of a calculation or something that you could do. Um, I don't know. When they nest together, Rick, do does the hanging hole line up with them nesting? Yes. Very nice. That's good. Yeah. So um, I don't hang them. I have a, a little ledge that I put all my straight edge type stuff together with. But uh, yeah, they would hang quite well if I was that type. Well, cheers, oh, on, on, on the topic of, uh, of tor torrified maple uh, or roasted maple, maple, I've always thought they were the same thing. To me, they smell like a Canadian breakfast, um, especially when you shave, <laughs> like you eat shavings. In shaving form, not so much when you when you cut it like on a on some kind of a powered saw or something, but actual shavings to me it, it smells like breakfast. So you you eat cold sauna for breakfast? Do what you have to do. It doesn't taste like it. It smells <laughs> like. <laughs> do, do, is Veritas still selling those? Um, or Lee Valley still selling those? Um, I think so. I believe um, they are. You can buy them here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they are. I, I have a uh, I have an addiction to um, straight edges, um, as you can see on the wall there. Um, and the the other room has probably another thirty or forty hanging on them. And so often or often enough, I will uh, I will just use some of those uh, metal rules and things. But I do have also um, uh, a, a, a machinist straight edge that's a uh, a 30 inch and uh, and I'll use that in conjunction with something else when I really feel like I need to um, really do something uh, check parallelity or, or uh, flatness when I need to but it's just very rare that that happens but now after seeing a few of those winding sticks I think I'd better make one or two probably two <laughs> well I think I'd better do um I've got to share uh, Jim's um, winding six that he made a few years ago. And unfortunately he can't join us today, but he has asked me to share his winding sticks. And um, I think it was Richard, you were showing the design on, on the end of your winding sticks. Yep. It reminded me of the ones that Jim, um, these ones that Jim made. And uh, he, I think used the, uh, the trestle of a table I think it was a table leg or something that he uh, copied the design off. Uh, excuse me, Jim, if I got it wrong, but it was something of the sort that he that he used to inspire that design. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's um, oak and I'm not sure what else, but then um, that is bog oak and boxwood. It looks like walnut on the top. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. This is why Jim has no friends. Look how they're beautiful. Did he give you a, a reason why he did the uh, black and white on the on, on the ends? Trellick, why he did both? I would take a guess and say it's on his post on the Unplugged, Wood, Unplugged Woodworkers group on Facebook. He likes Paul McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> think. And apparently Michael Jackson too, a little bit. <laughs> it may help you use them from both ends. So you, you look at one end of the board, go around the other end of the bench, look the other way. Because yeah. you want the, the black in the front, the white behind. So you need both. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Damn, I have to re redesign mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if there's no one else who'd like to share anything tonight. I got uh, a question. Got, does anybody take their winding sticks to the lumber yard? Yes. No? Oh, yes, certainly. I okay. Uh, when I was buying the the, uh, the lumber for my bench, I brought the winding sticks along because I, I found it a, a big help to make sure that I didn't buy uh, boards that were too much in wind. All right. Thank you. Because I was wondering that because the, the way you guys were talking about it is I probably might have saved myself a few bucks on some walnut I bought. It's um, it was uh, one and a half. It was almost two inch, and I wanted one inch boards. Mm. So I sawed them down the middle, 
and it looked pretty good, but they did that. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure why they did that, but I can't use them for the project. I wanted five feet straight boards for a desktop. I'll have to find something else to do, but that's interesting. I was, I, I thought about that. Well, they were held flat by the stress that was in them. And when you cut through the middle, you're releasing some of the stress. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, thought, I, I, I know that, but I'd never seen it do that before. Like I've seen them go like that or, but never kind of like, Cupping, they just yeah, yeah. I've I've had that happen. I've had that yeah. happen. It was quite a bit though. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame, isn't it? Well, I like working with walnut. I'll find another use for them. It's easy <laughs> enough. I need winding sticks. No, I <laughs> yeah, got this. So. I got this. This is going to be my winding stick, and I've got some more of it. So if I need a longer one, I can make it. And I feel inspired now, but I've got a lot of, a lot of new ideas. I think I um. We'll look at some of the material for, and, and somebody pushed me to the, uh, he said boxer, I think Shrenik said boxer. I think I might go with the, um, the hot corn beam hmm. for my wife. Corn beam's very stable. It's a very good wood. Yeah, I'm just, it's the first piece I've ever held, held and I just literally got it on Saturday um, as an alternative to boxwood. Um, well, and it my... goes wild here. I'm yeah. starting to think that I now have to make the opposite of these boxwood with, with purple heart. <laughs> oh, don't do that. Jim will have a heart attack and it will be on your conscience. Yeah, let's keep Jim around for a while. Yeah, please. I think Jim, Jim needs to be told that Daryl uh, had the same dealings with his eyes and he still showed up. <laughs> mm. 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 I've got um, one other um, uh, suggestion. On, uh, it's um, horribly practical, uh, not pretty, but I actually use a big old pair of old planer blades. Hmm? A pair of what? Old pair Plane of planer from blades. Planer blades. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. One, edge, one edge black, one edge white. They never move because I my workshop is an old 200 year old stone barn mm. so it's lovely this time of year because when everybody else is sweating on a really nice temperature but it's freezing cold in winter and obviously the humidity goes up and down like yo yeah so um so yeah i use a big old pair of planer plates do you dull the uh, sharp edge simon <laughs> yes yes i did uh, i mean obviously i can be careful with them anyway but um when i sent some stuff off to a machine shop um, for other stuff to be done, I just asked them to uh, peg them together and then just um, machine off the top, both so it was obviously perfectly parallel and and everything else. And, and obviously, um, I'm unlikely ever to have to redo them. <laughs> yeah. I like the idea of the metal ones, either the extruded aluminum or your steel blades. And, and uh, Kurt, uh, the Holtes are beautiful, the brass and stainless i assume that uh Shrenik showed earlier i don't know maybe some of you came afterwards but um that was a beautiful set i've never seen a set in pattern steel that might be nice Ooh, yeah mm. i got this um this is from Stu mac it's for um leveling fretboards it's a, a straight edge but i guess we got two of them you essentially have essentially the planer blades they do stand up on their edge. They're thick enough for that. Never thought of getting a second one. They're pretty expensive though. You can, you can get a very similar thing in much larger sizes uh, sold for plastering. It's a you know, good way to get a, a really, if you've got a five foot straight edge. Um, I forget what it's actually called, but it's a- Screeds, they're screeds. Yeah, thank you, yeah. I have a six foot screed, but I don't use it for that. I use it for plastering, so. <laughs> for waste. Um, can I ask a, ask a question? I mean, another thing that I thought might come up, um, and I've forgotten most of it, but somebody else will remember, I'm sure. Um, I think it was probably Chris Schwartz blogging a year or so ago about a design in Rubo of a sort of, um, winding sticks on legs 
that you can use on a oh, yes. partly flattened board. Anyone got any of those or tried them or remember what I'm half remembering? I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, I use that on the bench. When I'm just doing the corners on the bench to get those set right, I'll just set them up on little blocks, my winding sticks on blocks. Hmm. And then you, you don't have to worry about any um, curvature in the bench itself. You can get your corner uh, set first of all, and then work that, from there with a the straight it. edge. Yes, yes. Cool. <laughs> The good thing about them is that you can adjust the legs to, for narrow boards and for wide boards. So if you've got a board that's cupped in the middle, the wide can go sit in the middle and rock up and down. But with them, you can actually lay it on each corner and you can see if the corners are actually out of wind. This is, I'm getting lots of ideas for what to do with my box of pieces of exotic wood that are too small to do anything with, um, but too good to throw away. I think it might be some... Uh, some alternatives to aluminium in my future. <laughs> oh, alternatives to sending them to Shrenik. <laughs> um, there's a piece of purple heart about the size of my thumb. If I'm keeping that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the purple heart I'll ever need. Mm. Has it changed colour? Yeah, fortunately, it's got a nice brown. <laughs> Is that the thumb or the purple heart? It doesn't doesn't look as if somebody's gone over it with a, a sort of nearly worn out felt pen. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it stayed looking like proper wood. <laughs> Shall I go I'm now? Turning. Maybe Andy. <laughs> <laughs> and these, oh my eyes! You be in my um, attic workshop. They stay beautifully purple. <laughs> One of the benefits. Well, they stayed purple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right well um i think uh this is about time we, we all raise a glass and uh we all say cheers cheers to the cheers bench, to the bench. Cheers to